Hey Sun Valley, Kevin here. Um, happy to be with you guys today. We're going to be looking at two passages today in our time together. First one is Galatians 3, 26, and then the other one is over in Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 13. Uh, the first passage that I wanted to read together, I'm going to read it real quick. It says this, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And you may look at that and go, Paul, uh, I get your writings. Re remember, this is this is the Apostle Paul writing to the young church in Galatia. And, and some of us may be thinking, Paul, I, I understand your writings, but really, how does that look? How does that work? How do I, a, a person, sinful, broken person outside of the work of Jesus, how do I become a child? How do I enter into the family of God, a God who is all creating, all powerful and all sustaining? How do I get added into his family? And Paul answers in that same verse through faith. Some of us may be wanting a little bit more clarity, a little bit more information. Well, if you have your Bible, flip on over to Mark 10, 13. And as you're flipping there, let me set the stage a little bit. See, what we have in Jesus through the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is a visual representation of God the Father. See, Jesus, as he conducts his life, as he, as he goes about his ministry, what you see is the characteristics of God the Father displayed in human flesh for, for us to see. And if you're familiar with the New Testament books, you see that Jesus went to great lengths to heal and to teach. He did some rebuking in there too. But he went to people and he met people right where they are at. And so whether you've been following Jesus for years and years and years or somehow you stumbled upon this Devo and you might be thinking, Kevin, you don't know me and you don't know what I've done. I want to explain to each and every one of us that God loves us and he is willing to meet us right where we are at, no matter what we've done or what's been done to us. And so. Let's look at this passage. What we've got is Jesus is teaching. He's gaining popularity. People are coming to him by the hundreds. They're coming to him by the thousands. He's a busy dude. All right. And in verse 13, it says that people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And some of you guys are listening or reading along with me and you're probably thinking, man, what's wrong with the disciples? Why are they pushing the kids away? What's going on in their brain? You guys totally get this, right? Jesus is going, look, the kids are awesome. Bring them to me. And you guys are probably thinking, man, Jesus, y'all could have picked some better disciples. But let me explain this to you. See, society is, is, different then as it is now. It's, it's kind of ever changing and ever evolving. See, I have kids of my own. Uh, I know many of you do too. And I love my children. I cherish them. I value them. Every moment that I get to have one of them crawl up into my lap, I will stop what I'm doing. And I will cherish that moment because I know that it won't be long until those moments will become less and less and less. And see, Jesus is making himself available for the kids. But the disciples are looking at their teacher, looking at their rabbi and going, man, you are a busy dude. You're an important dude. You're a valuable dude. And your time could be used in better ways than hanging out with a bunch of kids. Because fact is, in this time period in humanity, kids were valued very, very little. They, they did not really have anything to offer. So they didn't have any value attached to them. And Jesus goes, look, guys. Look, my followers, you need to learn to look at the world through the lens of God the Father rather than the lens the world tells you you should. He goes, look, these kids, they want to be with me. They understand that that's a good thing. And they also understand that they have nothing to offer. Let's continue on. In 15, it says this, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. How many of you guys have ever gone to Target or Walmart with your kids? I know I have. I know that I have a mixed review of experience. 
Uh, whenever I walk into Target or Walmart with my kids, inevitably I always end up by the toy or video game aisle and my kids proceed to ask for things. They proceed to go, Dad, can I have this video game? Dad, can I have this action figure? Dad, 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 dad. And I always look at them and I go, I understand your want. How are you going to pay for it? They have no answer to this. But yet oftentimes we leave the store with some sort of bag containing some sort of gift for my kid. Why? Because dad's a sucker. That's why. No, look, I love my kids so much. I love them so much. And I want them to have good things. They realize that they're making asks and they have no way of paying for the things that they want. Jesus says, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. What is that telling us? That we need to approach God in whatever condition we're in and understand that we have an amazingly great need that only he can satisfy. And we have no way of earning or paying for that thing that we want and that thing that we need through our own actions we must understand, just like a kid at Target who wants a video game, the only way we're going to obtain that video game is if it's a gift from our dad. In the same way that we're never going to obtain the position of child, we're never going to be adopted into his family unless it's a gift from God, a gift from our father that's fueled by his love through or for us through the person of Jesus. See, look, we, we don't bring anything to the table. We don't have anything of value to offer. But yet he extends this gift to us because of his great love for us, no matter what condition we're in. It's amazing to me that, that, that God goes to great lengths and he chooses us far before we ever choose him. Verse 16, it says, And he took the children in his arms and put his hands on them, and he blessed them. He loved them, each and every single one of them, right where they're at. And that love that Jesus displayed for us to see in that moment is the love the Father has for you today. And it's the love that the Father has for me today. And he desires through the work, the redeeming work of Jesus the Son, he desires for us to have that right relationship with him where we don't just call him God, but we can call him Father. We can call him Abba. And he calls us child. What an amazing gift. May each and every one of us accept it. May each and every one of us never lose the awe that surrounds it. Let me pray. Lord God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your gift. May we accept it. May we extend grace to those around us. And may that fuel them to open the door of their heart to receive the gift of grace from you, Lord. We thank you for your love displayed through the person of Jesus for each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you for meeting us where we're at. You are a good, good father. Amen. Friends, thanks for being with me today. We'll see you next time.